The single greatest opportunity for competitive advantage is virtually free, simple, and available to anyone who wants it, and yet it's largely untapped by almost every leader in every organization. And I really believe that. It sounds absurd, but I'm convinced that is true. The single greatest differentiator and competitive advantage is sitting right underneath the noses of every leader, and most of them ignore it. Every organization I work with has enough domain expertise, intelligence, and knowledge to be wildly successful. However, very few of them tap into all of that knowledge, domain expertise, and experience because they're not healthy, because of dysfunction and politics and confusion. Samuel Johnson, the great writer, had a great quote once. He said, people need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. I love that quote. People need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. And I believe that's completely true. I'm just a reminder. I'm going to remind you of things you already know, maybe in a way that will help you remember them and put them into practice. A really, really smart organization that's unhealthy, and I see a lot of them all the time, especially in the high-tech arena, they tap into only a fraction of the knowledge they have. Healthy organizations like Southwest Airlines, they're not smarter than their competition. They don't have more PhDs and pay their people more and have more knowledge of the industry. You know what they are? Their culture is so healthy, so functional, that they tap into all the knowledge they have and that analysts look at them and say, they must be much smarter than their competition, but it's not about that. If we can build a healthy organization, we can make decisions that certainly look a lot smarter and we can thrive. See, when I talk about trust on a leadership team, I'm not talking about predictive trust, which says you and I have known each other long enough to know that if I say something, you can predict my behavior. You can trust what I'm going to do. Or we've been together as a team long enough to where we can predict what one another is going to do. Any group of people or any two people that have known each other for a long period of time has predictive trust. That's not that special. The kind of trust that makes a team great, the kind of trust that's required to make a team great is what I call vulnerability-based trust. Vulnerability-based trust. That's the kind of trust that comes about when people on a team can and will say things to one another like, I don't know the answer, I think I screwed that up, I need help, you're smarter than I am, I want to be more like you, can you teach me to be like you, or I'm sorry, I was totally unfair to you yesterday and I should apologize. When people can be that emotionally buck naked with one another, <laughs> and that's what it is, folks. When people can be emotionally buck naked and be completely honest about who they are, as a person, warts and all, it creates a dynamic on your team like nothing else. So I like this show Dirty Jobs because these people have these really weird, bizarre, dirty jobs, but you know what's amazing about it? A lot of them seem really happy. Like you'll see this guy, like these alligators, they're four-footers, they're snapping at them, they're sticking their finger up them to see if they're a woman or a man, putting them over, and they're like, I love this work, I love these alligators. <laughs> and I think, And I think about all the CEOs and senior executives that I've worked with that are miserable. So I got to do some work with professional football teams because I know some coaches and I, I was involved in, and they'd invite me to training camp. And I was all excited, you know? And I was shocked by what I found. The players would walk around training camp, you would have thought they were digging ditches for minimum wage. Many professional athletes are miserable. You know, here they are playing a child's game for millions of dollars half the year. <laughs> and they're like all bummed out. And I couldn't figure out why until later a friend of mine who was a head coach and a really good guy, but he was part of the industry, something happened. His team traded for a very high profile player. You all know who this guy is. A very talented high profile player with some personal problems, pretty young, millions of dollars, high profile. So the guy was coming out by himself. He had no family to join the team. And I said to my friend, I said, hey, are you and Nancy, your wife, going to have this guy over for dinner so you can uh, get to know him and find out what makes him tick and take an interest in his life? And my friend said, oh, no, no, Pat, this is professional football. This is a job. No, I, we don't do that. And I thought, here's a 24-year-old athlete with, honestly, the emotional maturity of probably a 17-year-old, given his background, you know, because it was a different life. And this guy didn't think it was his job as a leader and a manager to get to know him to take an interest in him. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if, I don't care if you're the head of marketing at a company or you're a line employee, if your manager doesn't care about you, and I've talked to senior executives at very um, interesting companies that didn't like their job because the CEO just couldn't care less about them. Nobody wants to be anonymous. I wish organizational health were a standard, 
just like having good finances and good technology and marketing. I wish someday, I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take. We're fallible human beings, so it's going to be a while. But I hope someday people go, well, you work in an organization. We have to be organizationally healthy. We've got to get rid of politics and confusion and be, have clarity and all those things. That will change the world, change society, change our families, change us as people. I think that's a good thing. Until that happens, though, this, this represents a really great opportunity for meaningful competitive advantage.